गुड इवनिंग रे साहब सर गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग नाइस टू सी यू वेरी फाइन नाइस टू सी यू सर इन दिस प्लेटफॉर्म राइट दैट्स अ अपॉर्चुनिटी यू आर गेटिंग यस्टरडे आई आई हैड नॉट कैरीड माय मोबाइल ओके व्हेन आई केम बैक देयर वाज सिग्नल इशू आल्सो सो टुडे मॉर्निंग आई आई सो एंड देन ट्राई टू रिस्पॉन्ड यस यस यू रिस्पॉन्ड देयर दैट इज या सो हाउ आर एवरीथिंग सर एवरीथिंग फाइन so you are in gurgaon now at present we are from to uttarakhand we are in okay. okay for about okay. A, for about a month now okay okay enjoy the enjoy the mountains all right right Okay, so we will uh, we'll wait for few more minutes. Uh, yeah, then we'll start. so uh, prajakta it is basically a forum for students is it oh uh, yes sir yeah okay uh, but uh, usually like uh, we forward this uh, like poster to all the uh, all across the india so uh, from professors to students to research scholars almost everyone join okay okay yeah okay many uh, you will see many of my gurus like uh dr s n joshi yeah. uh, uh, uh professor surender pal uh, dr b n basu uh, uh you know i mean these high power techniques i have learned from them you know so some of them will also be participating today i am already here yes yes yeah i yes. am i am already here uh, surender pal sir will also join i think yeah गुड आफ्टरनून सो माई सर सो आई एम कैरेक्टर साथ आई एम करेंटली वॉलंटियरिंग एज एन आई ट्रिपल ई एपीएम टी टी Uh, IIT Kharagpur uh, chapter chair so i am very uh, happy to uh, uh, like uh, happy to announce that uh, uh, welcome our today's guest uh, professor uh, kamal prasad dey uh, he he is like my uh, he was my supervisor for my masters uh, at uh, diet pune so i am very uh, uh, happy to uh, like conduct this session so i uh, i uh, i request uh, professor uh, sahu uh, he is in uh, professor uh, at iit kharagpur um, in department uh, electronics and uh, communication so uh, i request uh, professor sahu to introduce uh, our today's speaker 
Yeah. So over to you, sir. Thank you, Pradeepa. Uh, I hope uh, I'm audible now. Yes, sir. Okay. There is. Okay. Uh, good evening, uh, everybody, and uh, good evening, uh, uh, Dr. Ray. Um, I really, Professor Ray, Dr. Ray, and Professor Ray. Um, uh, thank you for uh, the invitation to come and give us your talk uh, uh, to our chapter here. And I'm sure the students will get motivated. Uh, before, uh, the, before I hand over the baton to Professor Ray, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce uh, uh, both to his bio data and introduce him. Uh, uh, Dr. K. P. Ray, uh, Dr. Gentech, uh, degree in microwave electronics from the University of Delhi and PhD from the uh, Department of Electrical Engineering, IIT Bombay. He is currently professor director and director of the School of Data Technology in head of the Department of Electronics Engineering uh, at Defense Institute of Advanced Technology, DRG of Pune. Prior to joining DIAP in 2016, he was a program director of Commute. Uh, looks like there is some echo happening. Uh, sure. Yes, uh, sir, uh, Professor uh, Ray, can you please uh, turn off your mic for some time? I think uh, there is echo. Yeah. Uh, and also, uh, I request all the attendees uh, to turn off their mic uh, for the time being. There is significant Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, yes. No, there is still a echo happening. Okay. I, 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 I. Should I not? Uh, I think uh, uh, Sir is presenting maybe because of that. There is a lot of echo. We are not able to hear properly. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, Professor Ray, would it be possible for you to name it yourself? I, I am not able to locate because here... Uh, it is it is at the bottom center portion. There is a microphone symbol. Yeah, the format is different. So I am not able to get where mic is, where I wanted to disable. Oh. Sir, you are presenting at this point, right? Uh, I'll stop presenting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Uh, yes, now it is much better. Now it is much better. Okay. So, anyway, so I'll once again begin, uh, by, by, by begin the introduction. Uh, uh, Dr. Ray uh, got his MTech degree in microwave electronics from the University of Delhi and PhD from the Department of Electrical Engineering, uh, IIT Bombay. Uh, currently, he is a professor uh, and director of School of Radar Technology and head of the Department of Electronics Engineering at Defense Institute of Advanced Technology, DRGO Pune. Prior to joining DIAD in 2016, he was the program director of Samir, uh, Mumbai, wherein he joined Samir in 1985 and worked for, for over 31 years in the areas of electromagnetics, RF, and microwave systems components, and developed expertise in the design of antennas and various other blocks related to RF and microwave. Because the list is too big, I'll just make it, shorten it a little bit. He has uh, successfully executed over 50 projects uh, sponsored by various government agencies, and as well as many industries. Um, so I'll skip through some of the uh, things that he has developed. Uh, recently, he developed a microwave sterilizer, Atudia to neutralize COVID-19. Uh, he was a guest invited an adjunct faculty in electrical engineering uh, department of I, uh, at uh, IIT uh, Bombay and Goa Engineering College, University of Mumbai and Siri Pilani uh, for postgraduate courses. He has guided uh, 10 PhD students, more than 130 MBEC students and evaluated more than 25 PhD theses. He has also co-authored a, co a book with Professor G. Kumar uh, and published over 480 research papers in international and national journals and conference proceedings. Uh, he has over 7,000 uh, citations uh, related to his work. 
He holds three patents, 10 uh, transfer of technology for commercialization and five, five patents. So he worked. He has been in advisory capacity for many engineering colleges, polytechnic, international, national conferences, chaired many sessions and delivered more than 120 invited talks, which also include the first Abdul Kalam Memorial Lecture at uh, ITR uh, DRDO Chandipur in 2018. He's a member of many national level scientific committees of various ministries and departments. He is an associate editor of international uh, Journal of RF and Microwave Computer Aided Engineering. Uh, John Wydian, prolific reviewer of IEEE TAB, AWPS, IEEE Access Electronics Letter, IEE, and various other journals. Uh, he, uh, he is a fellow of IET, a senior member of IEEE USA, and a life member of Instrumental Society, Instrument Society of India and engineers of EMI DMC Society of India. He received many awards including most coveted IET Ramlal Vadho Award 2018, IET uh, Rantya Pal Memorial Award 2014 and several research paper awards. Uh, with this, I would like to welcome uh, Dr. Ray uh, uh, and uh, we look forward to your talk and I would request all the speakers, uh, all the attendees to please turn off your microphones and hold on to your questions till the end of the talk. Um, thank you, uh, Professor Ray, for uh, agreeing to give a talk over here. And I hand over the uh, thing to you so that you can proceed with your talk. Uh, start presenting your screen. Uh, the, the sound was very blurred, so I hope you are able to hear me. Uh, oh, yeah. yes, yes. Okay, yes. and then also you are able to see the screen. Uh, no, not yet, sir. You, uh, you have, you are not able to see the screen. Uh, no, sir. One second. I have shared this one. Are you able to see now? Yes, yes. yes you are able yes, to see the full screen? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. So, uh, uh, most of the thing I could not hear what Professor Sahu was talking uh, because sound was very blurred. Uh, I hope that my sound is clear. Yes, it is. It is. Yes, 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 sir. Okay, so uh, so I'll be talking on uh, microwave system to disintegrate coronavirus, uh, which we call uh, COVID-19. And this instrument, which was uh, uh, the concept was envisaged in DIAT and we designed this one, developed and also validated. Uh, the, the name uh, given to this unit is Atulia, you know, it is unparalleled because uh, this was the unique machine developed to disintegrate the coronavirus uh, right uh, in the beginning. I mean, uh, the, the system was uh, tested way back in uh, 2000, uh, April 2020. So the name uh, of this unit is given by Atulia. Now, uh, you all know that DRDO works in the strategic field. But whenever there is some requirement comes at the national level, uh, we uh, gear up, uh, you know, to find solution for uh, those uh, challenging uh, problems. So this uh, pandemic uh, offered us, us a huge challenge and uh, we were told uh, 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 
by secretary uh, through our vice chancellor that we should gear up and try to develop some system which will help us either uh, neutralize uh, the covid virus or in general uh, to deal with this covid virus so lots of product uh, were developed uh, in drdo and many such uh, products were all, uh, were developed from uh, dit itself uh, like uh, uh, there was uh, that biodegradable mask there were various chemicals and then also patient uh, treatment uh, devices those things were developed uh, being a, a microwave uh, um, uh, engineer we try to use uh, this high power microwave uh, to disintegrate the uh, covid-19 uh, virus so this was this was the basic background the work started in uh, march uh, 2020 and by uh, by the end of april we were ready with a tested uh, system to disintegrate the coronavirus this is the team which worked under my supervision and uh, this uh, right from the investigation to the characterization and validation for the efficacy of machine was carried out at uh, DIAT. So the presentation will consist of the basic background, uh, uh, product background. And then we also studied uh, the basic constituents of coronavirus and the basic concept, or I would say, physics behind designing this system, and then design of a microwave sterilizer, Atulia. Uh, test, uh, testing of Atulia for efficacy and commercialization so that this uh, unit uh, can be made cost effective and then that will be available to the common mass. So we will start with the background. Uh, earlier while working in another ministry, uh, a microwave disinfection system was developed. You know, uh, the basic idea for that system was that right at the point of generation of infection in hospitals, you uh, have a freeze-like device where we dump all infectious waste and you run the unit for half an hour and then it will become benign. So this unit converted the uh, uh, infected waste into a municipal waste so that uh, it can be disposed of safely. So this was the unique uh, device which was uh, developed earlier and then uh, and it was for various type of hospitals you know for big hospitals it was 60 liter capacity was used there was also 30 liter capacity for medium sized hospitals and for pathological labs the, un, um, uh, the unit was uh, having 10 liter capacity and it was uh, uh, completely in indigenous uh, development. These are some of the basic dimension of this microbe disinfection system. And uh, uh, international patent was obtained for this one. And three uh, technology transfer was made when the microbe disinfection system was, was developed. And since the unit was developed for the first time in the country, its efficacy for disinfecting the hospital waste was to be ascertained. So this unit was taken to Hopkins Institute in uh, Bombay and all different type of microorganisms, infectious mi microorganisms, were spores, fungus, algae, virus, all these uh, live uh, microorganisms were used to test this one and the famous bacteriologist Dr. S. V. Gadre, who was the deputy director of Hopkins Institute uh, uh, way back in 2000, he, uh, he certified that these are all various microorganisms which were uh, used then, then coronavirus was not there. So all these things were uh, tested 
and finally he gave a certificate that it's not only disinfects it completely sterilizes the hospital waste you know where uh, very die hard very strong uh, that uh, microorganisms like spores uh, they were there and then he certified that there was no growth you know so when uh, challenge was thrown to us whether uh, uh, you know i mean such some uh, unit can be developed which will be effective for corona virus you know so uh, here in this case before designing a system though there were many challenges you have seen that the uh, the earlier developed uh, system which was microbe disin uh, disinfection system used a cavity where a uh, multi mode cavity where we you dump the infectious waste here and then operate it the, uh, for uh, half an hour and then it uh, the waste becomes benign but that type of situation was not there while dealing with the corona virus the virus could be anywhere any anywhere inside the room it may be sitting on the fifth page of your book which you are reading or it it, it may be there behind your table so so the the unit which was developed for uh, disinfecting the hospital waste where the basic cavity was multi mode cavity and 3 kilowatt microwave source was used for that that cannot be uh, used for could not be used for corona virus so so b- before directly assuming that the m- high power microwave will be uh, will have efficacy to disintegrate the corona virus uh, we before designing the unit we studied the basic constituents of the corona virus itself you know so uh, so we were happy to learn that the the covid you know uh, 19 which is uh, abbreviation of co from the i mean co and v from the corona virus infectious here i has been taken for that disease d so that is how it becomes co- uh, covid you know uh, covid and it is uh, uh, it is nothing but conglomeration of uh, the protein so the basic constituent of corona virus Uh, this study was done way back in uh, ap- uh, april uh, 2020 now it has mutated to some other uh, it has mutated to some other forms uh, so that i will also come uh, uh, to address the those issues you are able to hear me Uh, yes, sir. Yes, 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 sir. Okay, yes, sir. because you do not know uh, whether yes, sir. it is uh, audible. Uh, whether you are uh, listening to me, sometimes in between uh, the connection gets lost. You know, so uh, so so the basic uh, the basic constituent of coronavirus it has got nucleus the uh, which will which is rich in protein. and there is s protein or a membrane of s protein that binds this one and then that goes, that makes it uh, an envelope of various uh, constituents of uh, protein and on top of that there are spikes you know and these uh, these spikes uh, look as if you know they are the crown on uh, they are the jewels on the crown so that is how the name corona has been given that you derived from the crown and so so this these spikes they get uh, attached to the uh, inner liner of our uh, nose uh, mouth and that goes to our uh, that throat and goes to lungs and then they get multiplied so if when th- they are in this form then this uh, uh, the virus uh, becomes uh, very notorious the moment you are able to disintegrate this one then it doesn't remain uh, as uh, as a as a virus it it, it 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 when it get disintegrated then that is a normal protein so so having studied uh, uh, this aspect 
then we thought uh, the finer details of this virus you know so we we found out uh, that the they are very tiny these things weight of this virus is of the order of 10 to the power minus 17 kg the diameter of the original co- coronavirus lies between 80 to 90 nanometer you know nanometer now after various mutations like we are we are uh, talking about uh, this delta and delta plus which is highly infectious uh, that uh, the size of that one has reduced to almost one fourth so that's why they can travel to longer distance and that's why uh, i mean earlier it was only uh, uh, you know around 2 meter separation was sufficient now it has become 8 uh, meter 6 to 8 meters because after uh, mutating the virus has become uh, ta- uh, you know smaller you know so that's why it can travel to Uh, longer distance it, it, uh, as an aerosol it can travel to longer distance you know so 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 that is uh, that is different form of the original virus but then basic constituents has remain more or less same and s protein is the uh, dominant uh, constituents of this virus and another property of this one is that above 56 degree centigrade this virus gets disintegrated into its basic constituents of protein so they if one, one is able to hit this uh, 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 that virus and takes uh, uh, take it to the temperature of 56 degree centigrade it gets completely uh, Uh, sort of it is disabled it 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 gets disintegrated it gets neutralized so with this background then we went back and try to explore the possibility of using this high power uh, microwave system you know so here i mean this uh, slides gives you the basic uh, i mean basic subsystem of any uh, uh the high power microwave system here you you have a generator that high power uh, uh microwave generator and then you direct that high power energy to uh, to an applicator where you want to process the basic material so like in the case of uh the dielectric heating you know i mean this one could be parallel plate or you have seen the microwave disinfection system this par- parallel plate what multi mode cavity you know so the basic uh, uh that uh, uh, basic physics behind uh using high power microwave to disintegrate uh, the coronavirus lies in this equation power absorbed which is generated uh, in the high power microwave source power absorbed by, by the material you want to process uh, that uh, that absorption will depend on a square of the electric field v by d that is voltage and then d is the separation of this uh, parallel plate Uh, here for uh, only for the sake of example parallel plate is shown here it is directly function to frequency and then we, you know that any dielectric material will have complex uh, property and we call that uh, uh, dielectric constant as epsilon dash minus j epsilon double dash one is the real part and other one is the imaginary part and ratio of imaginary part to real part is known as loss tangent so that that is the indication of whether the might uh, whether the material is microwave lossy or not you know higher uh, epsilon uh, tan delta loss tangent is nothing but epsilon double dash divided by epsilon dash so epsilon double dash that is known as a loss factor uh, is given by epsilon dash uh, tan delta so this is the material uh, property and this is uh, this depends on 
how you have designed the applicator and what is the output power of the generator and frequency uh, one can uh, select you know and higher the frequency uh, according to the, this equation higher will be the absorption but then there is also resonance phenomena so that is not straightforward so there are three basic things power generation frequency of operation and material characteristics. So that's why we studied uh, the uh, constituent of coronavirus, and then we found it is rich in protein. And uh, protein is highly polar, you know. Uh, polarity, you, you understand, I'll come to that one, that uh, the polarity uh, of the uh, molecule makes it uh, oscillate with the applied frequency of the source and thereby there will be friction among molecules and then heat gets generated inside. So this is very very important para parameter that depends on uh, the material uh, uh, characteristics. So no matter how frequency you take and then no matter how large power you are generating you will not be able to rise the temperature of the material uh, uh, if the loss tangent of that material is very very less so i'll give you an example if you take a teflon rod and put inside a microwave oven even for 10 hours and you apply full power the the uh, the, temp, um, uh, the material temperature of that Teflon road will not increase even by 0.5 degrees centigrade because those materials cannot be processed using microwave as their loss tangent is very very low. So we were very happy to learn when we were doing experiments for microwave disinfection system where spores, fungus, algae, uh, uh, that AIDS virus, all those things were to be treated. Now in the same, same uh, uh, type of feeling we got when we found that the virus is nothing but uh, it's a group of protein, you know, in particular form. So, uh, so conglomeration of protein. So that's why then we design the system. Now, a quick uh, physics uh, of microwave heating, like these are the frequencies band which are available worldwide and these two are RF frequency. This is a transistor frequency which is very useful, but unfortunately in our country this frequency band has been allocated for mobile applications, so this could not be used. And then another band 2.45 gigahertz with plus minus 25 megahertz, that is internationally ISM. So all microwave appliances, they work, uh, you, uh, you know, in this frequency band. And for our application, we chose this frequency because I will come uh, to that aspect later, because we wanted to make our system highly cost effective so that every household will be able to use this unit and will be able to disinfect uh, the material before using. So we went for 2.45 gigahertz and this is the uh, reason behind that. And then this gives uh, uh, the cooperative study of the loss tangent, uh, loss factor, and then protein has got much higher uh, loss factor uh, even than 100. That's why protein gets heated at much faster rate uh, than uh, a glass of water, you know, and never boil egg uh, inside a microwave oven because it will blast like a bomb and that is the basic uh, physics behind that so uh, and this also as i mentioned resonance phenomena so for uh, absorption there is a peak around 900 megahertz so that uh, that frequency is ideal for this type of application but we could not go for that for two reasons one it is not available uh, uh, that has been allocated to ism uh, application and second one is magnetrons are still uh, costly because that has not become uh, as popular as 2.45 gigahertz where uh, the batch production of magnetron has reduced the unit price of magnetron less than three uh, uh, three thousand 
you know you remember way back in 1990 and 19 in the mid 90s uh, the cost of the magnetron in the cell grade magnetron used to be around 50000 1 lakh because of excessive use of uh, that high power microwave system as domestic appliances and industrial uh, uh, you know processing systems uh, there there has been a batch fabrication of large number of magnetron for many companies. Earlier it used to be English Electric and Varian used to make, but now there are many, many companies which make uh, these magnetrons and that becomes cost effective. So we could not go for 915, but even 2.45, the absorption is quite large, you can see here. So that is how the choice of frequency was, uh, uh, was done. Now coming back to the basic design, you know, as I said that a protein absorbs micro, uh, is highly polar and it uh, absorbs microwave uh, at a much faster rate. So uh, the absorption of heat, you can write the equivalent formula as mass into specific heat into temperature, uh, rise in temperature, and you can find out that when the uh, heat is absorbed, temperature rises very fast. So, so the uh, the uh, so so that is the basic uh, principle on which microwave uh, oven, microwave industrial uh, microwave systems they they work in uh, this uh, on this principle. So then. Uh, the virus we understood the basic constituents so it will absorb microwave uh, there will be differential absorption let us say in in uh, in in one of uh, inside your book the somehow the virus is present and then you know that they can survive up to a uh, few hours to few days so so if uh, uh, you know you uh, subject that uh, uh, that uh, that book you uh, irradiate with microwave uh, radiation uh, your uh, the temperature of uh, the book will not rise because uh, that dry uh, um, the paper doesn't uh, ha uh, absorb microwave because low transient of that one is not uh, high. Whereas the virus sitting somewhere hiding in some uh, portion of the book will get exposed to microwave, will absorb microwave and the temperature of that virus will, uh, will increase uh, beyond 56 degrees centigrade. I will come to that point and that will get neutralized you know so uh, another some of other features that microwave heating uh, or processing is a volumetric for phenomena i mean it doesn't de depend on the thermal conductivity of any material you know it depends on uh, depends on a low tangent so alignment and disalignment because when you uh, put let us say a piece of food inside microwave oven you know uh, uh, if moisture content of the wood is high then uh, what happens uh, these uh, those uh, uh, molecules will try to uh, uh, you know i mean get aligned and disaligned at the rate of 2.45 uh, 2 into 10 to the power 9 times per second because that is the uh, applied frequency 2.45 gigahertz so they will try and they have inertia so that is how the friction will be generated inside the material so heating here is inside out now same piece of wood if you try to heat using conventional method by uh, burning uh, that uh, that put uh, putting uh, uh, that flame uh, these things the outer uh, portion of that wood will burn and other portion will remain cool it doesn't it will not get heated so that is inside outside in and that will depends on thermal conductivity whereas here uh, that volumetric heating which is inside out ensures uniformity and also it uh, ensures uh, uh, that uh, uh, differential heating and that is how the virus virus will get neutralized so with this concept you know 
we uh, we designed this one uh, uh, there was a major challenge uh, because uh, like in the case of microwave disinfection system uh, you uh, designed a multi mode cavity i will come to that and where you put all the materials uh, infected material and then you can operate the unit and everything is inside this multi mode oven and they will get neutralized but here the covid virus can be anywhere inside the room it may be sitting on the surface of uh, that uh, metal surface of uh, almira or it could be there in some book or it it will be uh, in air so so you cannot uh, uh, put the whole room inside a closed chamber unlike in the case of a microwave disinfection system so this was a major challenge and also the concept of you uh, a concept of using a multi mode applicator to traveling op applic applicator was envisaged and then finally we we went for aperture matched radiator and we we designed this system so uh, the, the quick because the students are also participating this is the basic equation governing the design of multi mode uh, applicator it's a metal i mean uh, that uh, a uh, metal enclosure it has got three sides with a benson a b and d and then you know that tangential component of electric field on uh, the surface of the metal has to be zero uh, uh, so so then that is how metal uh, acts like a perfect mirror for electromagnetic wave so if you have launched microwave uh, inside this closed chamber you know depending upon these uh, these dimensions a b and d and frequency of operation there will be a mode uh, that uh, uh, that uh, various within the bandwidth of uh, uh, that signal which has excited this multi mode cavity there will be field pattern inside so for the design of uh, that uh, microwave oven or uh, industrial microwave uh, uh, that applicators or cavities one try to maximize the number of mode this l m n n so that there will be field uh, uniformity of the field so that when you load that uh, the cavity with material the field will again get concentrated depending upon the electric constant of the material but nevertheless when we design an applicator we try to maximize the number of mode inside so this is how we had designed uh, the microwave Uh, uh disinfection uh, cavity but here you cannot uh, put the total room or all the uh, the complete thing inside the microwave oven so this this uh, will not work so we uh, we got the idea of the traveling web applicator which is used for the paper industry and then we went for uh, uh, that uh, traveling uh, Uh, you know i mean uh, launch uh, there has to be a proper launching of uh, propagating or traveling wave inside the room you know so we chose uh, 2.45 gigahertz bec uh, because the magnetrons were are quite uh, cheap i mean cost effective so we uh, we chose 800 watt commercially available magnetron host of company makes uh, this uh, Uh, this magnetron now and then basic unit which we designed had main uh, two parts one is that microwave subsystems and then other way, one is uh, some small uh, the counter control and in interlock circuitry so that magnetron uh, the life uh, span of the magnetron is maximized so one has to have air cooling and uh, the voltages within specified limit which are applied to magnetron so so small circuitries i mean uh, in the form of power supply control and interlock switching cooling mechanism they are the circuitry part and then in uh, the microwave system will have the basic uh, microwave source and also aperture match radiator so these are the basic constituents and before that because 
sitting at uh, earlier it was two meter uh, that was the aim and now it has become six meter so so we uh, did uh, that free situation uh, we uh, through free situation if we take 800 watt uh, 800 watt uh, magnetron and then we try to go for uh, aperture masked horn uh, or upper open-ended waveguide or tuned uh, sort of uh, a radiator that will have gain of around 6.8 dB. So with with that we calculate and then found that if the virus is sitting on the wall at two meter distance, at what uh, what is the I mean one meter two meter like that we calculated for various uh, these things what will be the power reaching at that particular point and whether virus will get neutralized or not. So those calculations were done before designing the units and accordingly the beam weight of uh, these radiators were also selected so that in case it, uh, the, it if it is diverging then more focusing is required so that power density reaching to the object i mean all the objects in that line uh, or in that area will get completely uh, neutralized so so that calculation was done and then this is the basic unit we have 800 watt similar to what microwave disinfection system only challenge was to design uh, uh, and it has to be a compact handheld unit so you cannot have that matching circuits you know i mean uh, the monopole of the magnetron needs to be reactance of that and impedance has to be matched to the free space impedance so that the the there will be propagating wave so that was the major challenge uh, so there is a control panel we had for air cooling filament and anode supply and heart of the system is 800 watt magnetron and uh, that uh, that magnetron was uh, output of that was match to the radiating so that uh, that radiating antenna so that that's that was the major challenge aperture match uh, radiator and everything was envisaged as a handheld unit you know so 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 that's why uh, that uh, impedance matching uh, reactance neutralization all all those techniques we we adopted for this one you were able to hear me Yes, sir. Okay. So this is a typical uh, magnetron which had been used, 800 watt. And those days when we when we were making uh, this uh, this unit, all the shops were closed, you know. And then, uh, uh, unfortunately, that time only one working uh, microwave oven was there, and all other labs were closed. Those people who were inside. DIT only were present. So, uh, Professor Paul will uh, recollect that we have a dumping yard between buildings and there we found one discarded microwave oven and we found that, the, uh, that there was still some life on uh, that uh, uh, the magnetron used in that uh, discarded oven. So, we picked up that magnetron uh, which had 800 watt these are the frequencies and these we looked for uh, the power supply part of these uh, uh, for that magnetron and then quickly made uh, the uh, supply and here this is another view of that magnetron basic idea is there is a monopole antenna which acts as a output here monopole antenna though it look it is thicker but then it's nothing but a, a small monopole antenna and impedance of this one needs to be matched to the uh, uh, through this uh, radiator to the uh, 377 impedance of the free space so so this one we uh, we used and then this give this schematic diagram we required some gain in the beginning there we could not find uh, uh, fabricate this so we you just use aluminium sheet and use the open-ended waveguide so this impedance has to be matched uh, to for, uh, to through this waveguide section 
to uh, the and also this aperture this impedance has to be matched to the free space impedance so that uh, there is bare minimum reflection towards the source that will save the magnetron uh, the life of the magnetron will be enhanced and then here uh, there will be radiation so so this this was the basic idea and then this is the integrated uh, uh, the view of the second unit which we made i will show you show you the first unit and then we we made this one and we we ideally later on we thought that we will have a symmetric aperture but then that was then the flaring of the uh, this uh, uh, this section flaring seeker section becomes much larger so then we did not go for symmetric but for the calculation what will be the area exposed area at uh, uh, at three meter distance that was the maximum uh, uh, the distance which we had designed earlier uh, because do gaj ki duri this is what uh, uh, even uh, our own rebel prime minister used to say so we went beyond do uh, uh, gaj uh, ki duri so at that one what what will be the size r theta will be the export size so that also we calculated and how many angle you have to move the microwave uh, system handle system so that com complete room gets exposed so so this this was estimated and this was the first unit which we we made you know you can see that we use that old box and then there were uh, that uh, cooling uh, uh, this uh, uh, and also they should attenuate emi so all those things we quickly designed and this is the aperture which we could make uh, which was demonstrated to uh, that uh, secretary uh, drdo chairman drdo and these are the basic specifications of the handed handed unit which we made this was the first unit uh, which was made later on we sort of uh, 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 sort of, you know augmented the design and then went for these things and then we uh, uh, while testing we also used a coupler here and then monitor the forward power and reflected power so and we found that 98% of the power was getting directed you know i mean only 2% was uh, getting lost in the form of reflection or absorption uh, reactive absorption so this unit we we developed and then uh, the major challenge because those days uh, even the uh, that uh, the lab which test was not available because it was flooded with uh, testing uh, from the sample of patients so then we devised our own mechanism uh, to test this one so to to uh, uh, the fold strategy we adopted one is uh, by monitoring remotely monitoring the rise in temperature of uh, the sample which we are testing and second one is the nmr uh, analysis we did you know so uh, what uh, and for testing we did not get the live virus in the virology lab in pune uh, 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 though we approached them but then they were so busy and then naturally they will not give this live virus and we had one, only one unit uh, and they said that you bring the unit after six months and we will test but then that uh, th that much time we could not wait so what we did first rise in temperature method we did and also we demonstrated the efficacy of this unit using and uh, nmr analysis so temperature uh, we, we use thermocol and then uh, and also for testing we use s protein which which was synthesized in the lab we also use uh, that egg uh, white uh, that uh, that is very close to uh, the protein which is there in the virus so all different uh, that uh, protein we used and then uh, we uh, saw the, uh, monitor the rise in temperature in uh, i mean with full power and very uh, distance of around 2 feet the within 10 seconds 
temperature of the sample uh, which is getting exposed by microwave radiation shot up to 100 degree centigrade so we saw this one uh, uh, that and then also we saw that nmr plot i will explain here that this is the basic uh, uh, you know i mean uh, spectrum or you can say peaks of uh, the s protein and then this is an exposed uh, uh, that is spectrum and when we expose that with uh, the uh, our handheld unit which we made and you can see that this get completely disintegrated instead of having these three major peaks only one peak remains so it gets completely disintegrated and then you know you can see that peak gets shifted in other direction so the basic constituents of s protein itself uh, uh, is uh, uh, altered and then thereby uh, this uh, this doesn't remain uh, uh, that original protein so with these two tests we ascertained the efficacy of the unit and uh, we also uh, other infectant how this one is superior as compared to chemical spray high uh, high temperature other other uh, other means of uh, high temperature and uv rays uh, the major advantage of microwave radiation is it's a volumetric heating so uv ray will not penetrate uh, uh, inside any dielectric whereas the microwave will penetrate so this is 100 this has got 100 percent efficacy and also it is much uh, cost uh, it's highly cost effective with 100% efficacy so that commercial aspect were also looked into and then we the safety aspect also has to be taken care of we put a sticker on the unit that no one should be up, uh, should be there in the front side of the uh, uh, of the mouth of the uh, radiator and in the back side when operator is holding this one uh, we we uh, we uh, measured and also calculated that power in the back side at one meter distance is even on the uh, just behind the unit is 0.1 milliwatt per centimeter square much less than this one and this is much uh, safer than almost one tenth of the safety limit which is allowed here one milliwatt per centimeter square i mean sometimes we found zero zero uh, zero point zero zero five milliwatt per centimeter square so so this this unit was uh, 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 i mean uh, safety aspect also were tested and then a tot where uh, and we used all commercially available batch fabricated uh, subsystems in this uh, system so that it becomes cost effective if if the industry doesn't want to earn too much in one unit then the material cost comes around around uh, 3000 rupees material cost uh, so uh, so that cost effectiveness also was uh, uh, you know i mean was the design parameter and nine tot has been done they are mass producing these units and this is also listed in gem our idea vice chancellor has declared that it should be less than 5000 but then uh, these companies they are uh, they they put some more uh, gadgets in this unit and then the cost is around seven to eight thousand per unit so uh, and uh, this is these are some of the details these are uh, the industries uh, who has taken a tot and this is the basic specifications it was widely uh, covered by various press uh, also because it was launched by none other than uh, Honorable Sec uh, Chairman DRDO, Dr. Satish Reddy, and when industry made the unit, it was uh, uh, it was a product was launched in Nagpur by Honorable Sri Nitin Gadkariji, who is Cabinet Minister, and uh, this is we also got a C marking for this one. Uh, 
and then it is uh, trademark registered and then also there is a jam listing so uh, so right from uh, you know i mean uh, uh, like when the challenge was thrown to us so within two months time we invested with the background back, uh, we had background of developing microwave disinfection system so with that background we came up with a unit which completely sterilizes uh, covid virus so uh, lots of uh, press uh, uh, coverage was there for this one and almost uh, twice in a day they used to come and then take our interview now also uh, uh, that uh, they are in touch and then we want to take it to next level uh, and we are working on that but right now these units are available in uh, gem government team marketing so uh, so right from technology in decision to uh, realization and testing uh, testing of efficacy testing of safety everything was done uh, within uh, the institute uh, with uh, limited uh, gadgets available during uh, complete uh, closed down days you know so this is what i thought i'll share with students uh, from iit kharagpur so i did not go into the deliberations of technology whatever maxwell equation you study uh, that impedance matching uh, you uh, uh, are exposed to uh, while reading a, a transmission line design of whole antenna uh, transmission line theory then also high voltage power supply high power microwave uh, uh, that source all the, uh, all knowledge you know and what what class utilized to though it looks like a, a small unit like a small dabba but all uh, rigorous uh, simulation uh, for field uniformity for uh, uh, better matching from the generation to uh, free space uh, impedance everything has been uh, used to design uh, to indige indigenously design this uh, this uh, atulia so then uh, thank you yes sir uh, thank you sir it was a really very uh, informative session and uh, in very detail you have explained about the atulia so thank you so much sir so we have few uh, questions from audience uh, okay so we have one question uh, uh, from Raghavan S. So uh, he is asking what is the relative dielectric constant of uh, coronavirus? And is the source you had used uh, was the magnetron? Yeah, uh, we uh, this uh, we did not measure uh, the relative uh, dielectric constant of this one, but we uh, we. Uh, uh, knew the, uh, the this loss factor of S protein and coronavirus is nothing but uh, it's a conglomeration of S protein. So uh, as I said, the loss factor of coronavirus was much larger than that of water. You know, more than hundred. So so uh, so we took uh, S protein having known the basic constituents of coronavirus and then we worked around that we did not measure the uh, uh, that uh, dielectric characteristic of the coronavirus right. yeah s okay. protein that is well documented yeah yes yes so we have another question uh, can acoustic vibrations like ultrasound uh, instead of microwave based systems uh, be used in in order to uh, disintegrate the virus spike uh, what are the limitations yeah i mean that uh, that uh, acoustic uh, that mechanical wave vibration uh, but then uh, that uh, 
uh, how uh, like if it is there in the air you know i mean as a aerosol or like uh, i mean uh, i always give example of virus sitting inside uh, the book in uh, some uh, uh, pages inside the book there uh, that effective uh, mechanical vibration cannot be implemented you know so uh, though people have tried but then uh, that is not very uh, what do you, what do you call i mean inside the chamber uh, in a controlled way if you want to apply those things uh, you can do that but then uh, for uh, uh, for the situation where in any surface even in air this virus will be there uh, uh, that uh, those uh, methods may not be very uh, suitable whereas microwave you keep radiating you know like let us say 60 degrees the beam of uh, this uh, radiator and then if you put in a turn table inside the room and uh, like every 2 minutes let us say it, it rotates by 60 degree in six rotation it will cover the whole room you know so your whole room will get uh, Uh, uh that uh, uh, sterilized so so that is the basic uh, comparison between mechanical wave and this one yes yes sir yeah so another question is from uh, manikant so he is asking uh, how the uh, inside out heating is being performed here the differential heating concept so so here uh, uh because Uh, uh that when you radiate uh, a microwave and if there is even protein molecule that, that we have seen earlier also in microwave uh, disinfection system uh, there will uh, uh, the protein uh, having a higher loss tangent will absorb microwave at much higher rate than uh, uh, the, the material on which it is residing you know so so uh, def- um, it will there is no other way than uh, energy gets absorbed and then temperature will rise i uh, i'll i'll cite you the example i mean uh, that when you are using uh, let us say uh, boiling water you know uh, using microwave and we know that temp- uh, the boiling temperature of the water is 100 degree centigrade you know it will not go beyond 100 degree centigrade but there is a microorganism known as spores that that is very die hard uh, type of microorganism that gets killed only after i mean beyond 130 degree centigrade so using microwave uh, because uh, that water uh, gets heated only up to 100 degree centigrade uh, but spores Uh, having uh, you know having uh, uh, spores being rich in protein they absorbs a microwave at much higher rate than uh, water so they, that gets neutralized you know that itself indicates that there is a differential heating and we we did that i mean we, when we were experimenting we were putting in a teflon tray Uh, that s protein when we were putting s protein temperature was ri- shooting up in 10 seconds it was shooting up to 80 degree centigrade 90 degree centigrade whereas uh, the uh, teflon was uh, temperature was not even increasing by 0.5 degree centigrade you know so all these things indicates uh, because we did i mean nobody will allow you to uh, to uh, to have a live virus you know i mean and um, so uh, and it is well uh, known uh, strategy to use once you know the basic constituent of the virus use uh, that material you know not in the form of virus but yeah. that material and then characterize uh, the uh, i mean uh, ascertain the efficacy yes yes sir so when one more question is here uh, can we use this product in in the case when virus is on some food products example vegetable fruits uh, without harming the food items yes i mean uh, uh, you can irradiate uh, um, uh, these things for that anyway for uh, vegetables and all those things you have microwave oven at home 
but uh, you know here uh, uh, whatever is open a uh, surface open object you know i mean you can uh, irradiate that one for uh, uh, i mean uh, to be very safe we are putting now one minute otherwise even 15 second used to be sufficient when we tested you know so so let us say uh, there will be because of the medium there will be some reflection uh, you know i mean you know that uh, they uh, these uh, electromagnetic uh, waves they get uh, diffracted refracted so so for that reason instead of uh, 15 second or 20 second we uh, we suggest that you uh, uh, expose this one for one minute so yes i mean uh, all all uh, Uh, open objects uh, that is the advantage and that is that was the major challenge you know anyway uh, microwave ovens are there uh, in every house these days you know yeah. but then that cannot be used to sterilize your room so here you you sort of irradiate all the uh, corner uh, and all uh, portions of your room and then get it uh, the virus can uh, mo I mean, once they are exposed, definitely they will get disintegrated. Yes, yes. Sir. So we'll take one last question. Uh, is the vacuum room is required for disinfect? What is the front star? So oh, I did not get you, Prajakta. I'll repeat my question. Uh, is vacuum room is required uh, for disinfect disinfect uh, and what is the front sar no i am i am not able to get your uh, question oh. okay sir no issue so we'll uh, write write to you you can uh, i mean wh- whatever doubts are there they can write to me you give okay, them yes, my yes. Uh, email yes yes sir 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 yeah uh, can i see your words Yes, yes, sir, sir, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. I. Um, it is very enlightening to hear you. It's a very uh, informative talk, particularly for the youngsters. And uh, Professor J P Ray is very well known to us. He has helped us in Siri. Well, very start. He has initiated the MTEC course in microwave engineering. So he helped us a lot in teaching our students for so many batches. And otherwise, also there are very long-standing relations with uh, Professor Ray. Uh, just why uh, I'm, I'm first of all, I like to compliment you and your team for do, for achieving this, and not only uh, achieved in your lab, but you have uh, will be able to transfer the technology to the industries, which is very uh, creditable to you and your team. Uh, we just have just have a query. Say when you are disinfecting, so when you are radiating. Uh, what would the size of the room, maximum size of the room, which can be disinfected? Uh, sir, your mic is uh, muted. Uh, yeah. So you can uh, stop presenting and then you can uh, unmute. Oh, so sorry. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have you heard my query? After compliments, I have a small query. Sir, abhi bhi sound nahi me. I will telephone and I will uh, okay. clarify uh, your right. your doubts. <laughs> But anyhow, yeah. I congratulate you and your team for this great achievement right. in this uh, COVID COVID nineteen period. Good luck to you for your future endeavors. And thank you, sir. Uh, thank you. You have been my guru. Yeah. I have learned many things from you. So, thank you. Uh, I am not able to hear all the questions properly. So maybe I will. I will uh, clarify these doubts. Uh, yes, sir. So yeah, thank you all attendees, and uh, thank you, uh, Professor Ray. Thank you for accept, accepting our invitation. So yeah, so we'll uh, conclude uh, today's session. Thank you all. I also thank the, I also thank the organizers. Yes, yes, sir. Thank, thank the organizers. Yes, sir. Yes.
Thank you, thank you for the wonderful presentation. Thank you, thank you, sir. I mean, and thank you, Prajakta, yes, uh, for uh, and all the uh, participants, uh, students particularly, for their patience and perseverance. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Right. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you, sir. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much.